Guard your girl boxing. We got a lot to discuss tonight, boy. <laughs> overtime. We work on overtime, overtime tonight. Overtime, man. You know, uh, it, it, it's crazy. You know, we're actually, you know, not to forget, we, we're coming off uh, this Saturday's, uh, or last Saturday's Oscar Valdez and uh, Manuel Navarrete fight. Um, a, you know, a war, you know, that, you know, Oscar Valdez just kind of took the worst end of, but he, he, you know, he didn't fight a bad fight. It's just Navarrete, his punches just w were having w way more uh, of, you know, an effect on Oscar Valdez. And Valdez okay. did catch him a few times, but um, overall, man, it was just, you know, Navarrete, you know, I worked him and, you know, went to a decision. A decision win. Um, so, did you want to talk real quick about that fight before we? <laughs> I mean, I, I think that, like you said, I, th I think that it was, it was a, a, a I don't want to call it a lopsided war, but I, it was a nine-three. Yeah, you know, if you had an eight-four type of war. Um, like you said, Valdez didn't fight a bad fight. Navarrete is he's long, he's awkward. Um. You know, he throws a lot of he threw over a thousand punches in that fight. Yeah, you right. know, I, saw that. Um, I think that Valdez, you know, was able to stun and buzz uh, Navarrete with a few, you know, uh, telling shots. Yeah, but for the most part, you know, uh, you know, Navarrete just outworked him. You know, um, just dictated the pace. You know, throwing these long, weird, awkward shots. And, you know, Oscar Valdez just never could really adjust, you know. And I just think that he, you know, did what he could, gave his exciting fight. Look, I was on the edge of my bed watching the fight. Yeah, man. And, I, you know, I didn't never think Oscar Valdez could seriously hurt him. But, you know, he, he never gave up, you know, if, whatever that means, you know. So, but it was it was entertaining, to say the least. Yeah, it was, you know? it was an entertaining fight. It, it definitely was. And as far as Nafarate is concerned, I mean, you know, he's mentioned the, you know, the idea of fighting Shakur and, you know, I'm like, all right. <laughs> but I think ideally right. it would be just like unifying the division. There's not a lot of huge fights there, namesake wise. But I mean, you know, the division's kind of wide open. You know, there's the champions there. So I guess we'll see what happens as far as who they target next. And then with Oscar Valdez, man, he's kind of in that, you know, that proverbial fork of the road now, you know, where it's like, where are you at in your career? He's got two losses, right. but it's like it's a this was a pivotal loss. Yeah, yeah. So I guess we'll it's have crazy to... how a fighter can only have two losses, but yeah, you know, still have a lot of weird tear on they on they body. Yeah, you know, man. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, people forget about that. You know, I mean, it's yeah. it, it, it's you, you can't really look at the wins and losses as a concerns like the like you said like the wear and tear. Um, but. You know, I, I spoke earlier today, man. You know, we have had this crazy year in boxing. You know, starting from, like, uh, Plan and Benavidez. Yeah. On. It should have been Charlo. The crazy part was that it started out bumpy because, remember, we were supposed to get Charlo and Tim Zhu, but his hand got injured and they can't. Remember that fight? Was yeah, supposed to be like that's January. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was that's supposed right. to start the year off. So, yeah, good point. Good point. Yeah. And from that, from that point, we have had like a stellar year man i gotta say in, in relation to the last like 10 years or so i mean back to back to back to back fights and then we got the fight finally that we we were waiting for with crawford spence it's crazy to say we are post crawford spence you know it's it's, it's crazy know. to say um, I know it's crazy. We're gonna talk about him in a minute. <laughs> There's Crawford, but um, Crawford's general, been on the, everybody's mind lately. Oh, uh, the we we've had a crazy year, and I think we're we're kind of like in this like uh, I mean, there's fights. Don't get me wrong, there's fights coming up, but we're kind of like in this slow downward time. It's gonna be kind of idlish, and really, all roads at this point, man, are leading to the press tour that we saw over the week, right? Canelo Alvarez versus Jamel Charlo, not Jamal, Jamel Charlo, uh, undisputed junior middleweight champion, yeah. going up two way classes to fight the undisputed super middleweight champion, uh, Canelo Alvarez. They did the New York presser, they did the LA presser. Um, what did what did you, what did you get from it? I mean, we talked about it, but like, what did what did you get from from the press tour? Um. I think that it, I was a little shocked. Jamel was extremely calm. You know, um, we always thought that in this 
type of situation, they would like kind of sell the fight a little bit more. But I think that they probably, you know, Jamel probably saw with Spence and Crawford that, you know, people going to support and come out regardless when it's a good matchup. You yeah. don't even have to. Like, I think with the influx of social media and all that, that didn't exist before. So now, yeah, you don't really have to do a whole lot to sell a fight. It's like if 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 the product is, you know, uh, worth the paper it's printed on, people going to buy it. Right. You know, so. True, true. But I think that overall, I was not shocked, but Jamel is extremely bigger than Canelo. And this is where things get weird at, right? So. Civilian wise, Jamel is way bigger than Car- uh, Canelo. Boxing wise, Canelo is still right. And I, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because that's yeah. something that's a misconception yeah. sometimes when you walk around weight and the weight that you fight as, it's really right. two different things. So the walk around, and, I, and you know, people don't understand that if it was that easy, everybody would fight. Right. And we talked about this before. Like, yeah. Who's cutting weight? Got to watch what you eat. And just that in the third, like, you know, when fighters can fight in a higher weight class, not saying that you still don't have to train and take care of your body. Right, right, right. You know, you want to put the wrong toxins and the wrong, you know, stuff in your body. But at the same time, cutting weight is no joke. So if you don't have to cut weight, you know, and, and, and starve yourself, like, it's just different. So if everybody could walk around and walk around weight, they would. You know, listen, is Canelo a big guy? No, he's, I mean, he's big far as boxing-wise, like, far as, like, fighting in his weight class. He's technically the bigger guy. You know, he's a short guy. Um, um, He's not a devastating puncher, but he's his punching ability, and, you know, we saw that in other fights that he's, you know, took recently, like when he fought Caleb LaPlante, who's a true super middleweight. We saw Canelo was able to, you know, impose his will on Canelo. Um, uh, excuse me, Caleb Plant. So it tr- showed that he's he he grew into super middleweight, right? So he's still a natural super middleweight, and Jamel is still a natural junior middleweight. So with all that being said, like from the press conference, I think that um, you know, the fact that they did these pressers for New York and LA, the two biggest markets in America, um, they're expecting probably a good card. The tickets are high as hell. I can yeah. tell you that they <laughs> right. more than Spence and Crawford. Um, no, look, he's still a big ticket. He still draws, you know? Yeah. That's why everybody want to fight him. So I think that, you know, from Jim, from the Jamel standpoint, I think that he's in a great he's in a great situation, win, lose, yeah. or draw. Yeah, absolutely. And this is this is why, like, even Tim Zhu said, like, hey, man, like he's 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 fighting Canelo Alvarez, man. Like, what are you gonna what are you gonna do? You know? Yeah. You, oh, he it, finally came out and he came out and said it. Yeah, okay. one of these he, interviews yeah. I saw, he's yeah, like, yeah, "Look, yeah. man, like, yeah, yeah." <laughs> so, I mean, the thing with Jamel, man, I, I can't like it, it's hard to knock him because it's like, who wouldn't take this opportunity? Yeah, to I mean, it's, uh, the oh, arguably, you know, the cash cow boxing still, and if he believes, you know, I mean, he's been inactive. You know, he's coming off that broken hand. Uh, yeah. but he has to make best of the situation, man. And we've seen a nutty year in boxing. And you really never know. Uh, it's but, just, yeah, yeah, man. I mean, I, 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 I for Can, I mean, at least for Canelo too. It's we look. We <laughs> we're we're gonna get to another subject in a second. But I think in his, in it, with him, he's in a position. And you know, I made a post this you know this week. Oh. That got put up and you know it's got people talking. It. You know, yeah. I get it, I get Let's it. Get into it. But listen, man, like at the end of the day, Canelo ha- has gotten to the position like other fighters before him where he can kind of he commands the Take dollar it. and yeah. he commands mm-hmm. his career, you know? Um but I, I don't know if it was you or ROD said, man, but at the same time as you're currently fighting, you're not exempt from criticism. And it's why I posted what I posted as a concern. Well, listen, you know, Canelo can, he, he can do whatever he wants, but this is, I want to say the third guy he's brought up from two weight classes. Factual. David Benavides has been Mando with, for the WBC since I, I think my son was like in fourth grade. 
and like <laughs> you know like, right and yeah and and um on top of that you know it, it listen man like i don't i don't want we could sit here and nitpick like resumes and things and such but like all i'll say is as long as canelo alvarez and any top fighter is fighting while they're in the position to kind of command their career they're not going to be exempt from criticism and the fact that there's obvious fighters staring at it in front of you or maybe over here that are fights people want to see you know and, and it just comes down to you know making those fights but I digress. So, to your point, and listen, it's a legitimate question. Like, I don't understand why people think that an active fighter can't be questioned. Like, they questioned Ray Robinson. So, you think Canelo can't be questioned? Look, they call Joe Lewis opponents the bum of the bum of the month yeah, club. Yeah, the bum of you know, the so yeah. month the, the list goes on of of great fighters that been an exempt is a great word like that didn't have that exemption where you can't criticize them. My question to piggyback off what you said, and you know, I've always been adamant about this is that Canelo is the one fighter in modern day history that I don't believe I can go to one fight. I'm talking about great fight. And I'm not talking about when he was beating guys like Liam Smith and those type of guys with all due respect. I'm talking about great fighters in their respective prom. When he fought the next morning, could you wake up and say that he decisively won? And you go through like his resume, and I'm only I'm going somewhere with this while I'm bringing it up. And people are like, well, why it's not fair to compare what this fighter did off one night to Canelo career? And I said, actually, it is because this fighter wasn't given the opportunity like Canelo had. You know, Canelo had the opportunity to get these fights. And this guy didn't get the opportunity. And when he did get out the opportunity, not once, but twice, decisively beat both guys. Where Canelo, with the exception of Caleb Plant, which was a great win, but outside of that, you know, you look at his two Triple G fights, controversial. You know, even though I thought he, just, I thought he won the second fight, but I thought he lost the first fight. You know, but some people thought he lost the second fight. Whatever, whatever. Aris Landy Lar, we all know how that went. Uh, Austin Trout gave him trouble. It was open scoring. So it's always like something. There's always, always something attached. Right, right. It's right. always. And it's just a fair question. It's not, look, he's a great fighter. He's in the Hall of Fame. He's picked up titles here or there, paper champion, whether or not. But my thing is that why is it with Canelo? We always wake up the next morning scratching our head when he's in these fights or he loses the fight like the Baval fight it's like it's always something you know yeah so here we are now and you brought up a good point about Josito Lopez junior welterweight moved up to 154 two weight classes Amir Khan oh he was once a junior welterweight once but he was that welterweight, welterweight yeah. at the time <laughs> yeah actually Khan was I mean uh because a lot of fighters started at lightweight but he actually started at lightweight you know but right he was at 147. So even with that being said, he still moved up two weight classes and had him fight him at 160. So now it's happening again with Jermel Charlo. So people are going to say, well, if he win, if Jermel win, then then what? Well, it's a, it's a great win for Jermel, no doubt about it. No, they said if Jermel win, then people are going to say Canelo's old. Um, maybe so. I don't know what they're going to say, but I do know this. Canelo is fighting a guy. Uh, it's it's just it's just and listen. He's not the first guy to do do stuff on his own leisure. Like a lot of great fighters had did stuff at the right time, and I'm just like, damn. Like the Charlo fights is taking place now, which is cool. You know they get they're getting paid. Charlo's Charlo, and then right. they talk about fighting their brother after this until some news came down the day, <laughs> and this is where. Which is the perfect segue and what we're going to. And that other guy who I was talking about was Bud Crawford. Look, Bud didn't get the opportunity to fight other people. And we all know why that happened, because the other side of the street, it was just a lot of red tape and he had promotional issues of his own. When he got the opportunity to fight Sean Porter, knocked him out. When he fought Earl Spence, uh, 
And look, Earl Spools has an, has an announced he's retired, but some people are suggesting that he retired. He retired Sean Porter. So, arguably speaking, you could arguably, you could make the argument that Bud might have retired two fighters. You know, so two great fighters. So, here we have Bud Crawford, who fought the fight of his life. Everybody calling this the fight of the decade and this is the greatest fight since Leonard Hearns, despite Sunday, people trying to change the narrative. But one thing you can change what Bud did to Earl Spence. And you know me, Roberto, what my stance was. If whoever won this fight is going to be because of skills. That's what I said from day one. Whoever won is going to be because one guy was better than the other. And Bud Crawford was extremely better than Earl Spence. And he's been on a media tour since then, since his big win. And originally he was asked about Canelo. He said, no, nah, you know, the weight is too much. I don't know if I can go up that far. And then, boom, Flex, Funk, Funk Master Flex, Flex Bomb dropped the deck on the Joe Rogan show. On the Joe Rogan yeah, show. The, <laughs> he said, yeah, I want the winner of Canelo and Charlo. Wait, at 154 pounds? No, at 168 pounds. I want the winner, either guy. And here we are. And here we are. <laughs> here check, we are. Check, checkmate, because that was one of the most made. That was such a major chess move what he did today. But go ahead, and, I, and I'll, and I'll I explain mean, listen, why. Boy, we I mean, we, you had brought it up, and then I toyed with it in my head, and a lot, a lot of boxing, man, is timing. And matchups that will draw attention. Now, I'm going to just, you know, like, I think, like, the flavor of the month has been these catchweight fight, like, like, you know, you ain't tank and, um, you know, Bud and tank and, and things like that. And, you know, we're sitting there thinking, like, these fights will happen. And in steps, Bud and says, listen. I'll go. I'll fight the winner and go to 168. But it, it goes. It roots back to what we've said for a while now. Like Crawford's 30. He's gonna be 36 this year. Yep, he's mentioned that quite a few times too. His age. When you think about, let's just say September 30th, right? Jamel Charlo loses. You know, from that point. Even as he's being asked now, you know, the, the, the idea of him going back to 154 seems like slim to none, you know? Right. And then, yeah. we, and then the incentive for Crawford kind of disappears. It's like, what's the big fight? And here's Canelo Alvarez, okay? And I want to see September 30th how he looks in general because I'm still Absolutely. on record saying that I feel we are seeing – the uh, last. Contrary to what some are, are, are not believing, I feel we're seeing the slow tread down for Canelo Alvarez. Yeah. You look for trends. And since the Baval fight, man, he just isn't that... He's, something's missing. And maybe Jamel can exploit some things that ultimately, and I told you this today, there could be potentially September 30th. Okay, if people know the history between how Leonard and Hagler got made. The embryo was mm -hmm. the Mugabe and Hagler fight. Mm -hmm. Ray the crowd with his brother. They sit and they watch the fight. It culminates and Ray gets up and he looks at it and he goes, yo, I can beat him. I have a strange suspicion that mm -hmm. Terrence Crawford is going to be sitting back on September 30th and watching the culmination of this fight, and it could be a very similar scenario. And, and look, even us here talking, like him going up to 168 sounds really crazy. But this is where boxing history tends to, like, you know, play the, the carousel or do be the revolving door. Listen, man, you go back to Henry Armstrong. Henry Armstrong was a featherweight. That mm -hmm. ultimately fought for the middleweight championship of the world and might have gotten robbed. Might have gotten robbed. Okay, a featherweight. So this isn't like out of the realm, you know. But it takes a special fighter to go Absolutely. up in weight. I think 
No, you're right. Yep. To to be able to, because listen, to, for for any, if, if you were the most hardcore Terrence Crawford fan, like you would have to be mindful that him going up that much in weight, it, there there is absolute risk. risk. Yes, he absolutely. did. Um, and I'll shoot it over to you, but he, <laughs> and this is why I'm, we're starting to see Terrence Crawford is a very clever and calculated dude. Yes, he is. Maybe more yeah. than what we initially thought. And it, yep, yep, it's been hidden. Yep, no doubt. And yep. He posted after getting on the Joe Rogan show, and to your point, man, like he knew what he was doing. He Absolutely. said, he wrote, he goes, you know, it ain't size that wins the fights. It's, you know, it's skills that pay the bills. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. Okay. He's throwing two gods. He's throwing and that, one. he's throwing that, that little pebble in the pond, man. He, he basically box boxing two guys in the corner. Remember, key key element here too about the Jamel situation. Jamel is no longer undisputed because on September 30th, the WBL was being stripped and given to to Tim Zoo. So therefore, remember we're in a four belt era in an era now. No longer right, three right. belts. So you got to have four belts to be considered undisputed, right? With Zab. <laughs> Got Zab when he was at welterweight, it was just a three belt era back then, you know. But we're in the four belt era now, so Bud was like, Screw that one. He could, so first, Jamel, you and I already said that was happening before Jamel even said it. You know, we was telling him, we was telling RLD that like that fight is not happening at 154. Like, he's not, especially if he win, why would and that would be stupid? Like, why would you win? the super middleweight championship and then go all the way down to 154 right. and lose all your leverage. Right. Why would you do that? You know, unless you was like, a, you know, a guy, because if Jamel is able to beat Canelo and beat him convincingly, then maybe he can stay at 168, you know, and do whatever it is he wants to do there. You know, maybe fight a guy like Caleb Plant or something like that. I don't know what he was his plan on from there, but Canelo, on the other hand, if he wins, Canelo... All he does is blockbuster fights at this point. I don't think PBC brought him over there to fight John Riders of the world. With all due respect to him, you know, they it's all blockbusters a bust. But like you said, now he just put a monkey wrench in the game. Crawford, look, everything's about timing. Like you said, Crawford understands that his buzz is hotter than it's ever been. Got it. He also, no, right. He threw a rock in the, in the, in the um, river. That's a perfect analogy, right? So he also understands that Guys like us, look, I put a post up earlier today, ironically, talking about this very subject. My mom was more so about comparing them, their, their careers versus them fighting each other. But these guys, they they, they got a, a ear to the streets. They hear and watch everything that's going on. So we weren't the only people. The whole boxing community was talking about this fight taking place because we got a traffic jam. Yep. Same thing that's happened perfect. in the late... Remember in the late 90s, this happened when... De La Hoya and all of us on a pound for pound list. You had guys like Roy Jones talking about I can get down to 166 pounds yeah. to fight De La Hoya. We obviously Bernard for Trinidad and De La Hoya. So it's not like this hasn't happened before. Like you said, we've been here before. You know, but we're talking three weight classes, but still, Jamel's at 154 pounds, which is a weight class up from from uh uh Bud. And he's fighting Canelo. And tell you, that was a great frame of reference of bringing up Ray Leonard when he was with his brother and they watched the Mugabe uh, Hagler fight. But I think what happened, my personal opinion is that I think he talked to guys like Roy Jones who jumped, you know, two weight classes to go fight John Ruiz. Maybe he had a conversation with Ray Leonard too. I don't know, but I definitely know him and Roy got a relationship and I could see a guy like Roy telling Bud like, you you could beat Canelo. Like, get the you know you don't have to put on a whole lot of weight. Just get close enough to the weight as possible, and you'll 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 beat this guy. You know, trust me, Canelo, small as Crawford is, and he got to move up and all that. Him and Reynoso, I don't think they're in a rush to fight Crawford. You know, if 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 they had a day way, but what I always say before you and I jumped on the live, and I'll share this with the people. I'm gonna tell you like I told me, cash rules everything around me, and when people say. Well, Crawford made, I mean, Canelo made a lot of money. Yes, he did. But these guys never want to stop making money. <laughs> never, man. Like, never, never. Like, that's the point. I mean, that's the thing about the thing about this. Again, this is all potential, right? But 
Yeah, bro. Listen, we listen. We still a long. So much got to happen. You listen. You said even before this fight got signed, we won't know anything until September thirtieth. That's that's <laughs> why that fight, in a weird yeah. way, the yeah. caveat you to it is like, that, though. yeah. yeah. The, Part of the caveat to it is, is to see like what culminates because you know Terrence Crawford's kind of sitting there like, I, and this is just crazy because if you really put it into perspective, man, like we haven't seen a fighter. It's one thing going to weight classes, right? But and we could say certain, you know, there's fighters who've gone up in weight and then fought like, I'll fight that guy that has a title, or I'll. Like yeah, Jack, I mean, this is this would be Crawford going. He he beat the top guy at you know welterweight, and he would be beating the top guy at super middleweight. Super middleweight. I don't think for undisputed. Like that's never been done. And from that perspective, of I bring up Henry Armstrong, but you got to remember the times that they those. They, the guys, the champions they fought were the guys. Like, that's just right. what it was, you know? Where this would just be like, in our, at least in our lifetime, because you can't even compare this to Manny and, 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 and Oscar. Because at least with Oscar, remember, he was like halfway into retirement, halfway out. Yeah, yeah, that was such a different... Yeah. That was, that was what you was talking about. Like, he just basically... Handpick the most ideal guy to be at 147. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Exactly. So this would, in our lifetime, man, this would be some really historic stuff. Well, listen, I'm I'm a contra. So this is where the contradiction comes in. At right, the people have got amnesia for certain stuff. Remember when Spence was supposed to be fighting Canelo? Remember? They all was like, and I'm talking about Canelo and Reno. Oh, that's a fight we always. Oh, we all at. want to see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember that they said that the Reno. So they said it. Like they said that's a fight that they, now. So just this week they said, well, Canelo was like, I can't go beneath 168. That's the only way the fight will happen. And well, he's like, all right, let's do it. <laughs> what what cannabis say? I call your bluff like you got a phone number. Yeah, you know oh, I mean, remember that? Yeah, yeah. 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 And that's what happened. It, yo, I'm telling you, man, this is... Uh, Got on a jack and called that bluff. That This is going to be some crazy stuff because, I mean... The I little just... guy is bullying the big guys. How about that? The little guy is bullying the big guys. The and this wasn't <laughs> Gervonta Davis, Leonard Ellaby saying, oh, Gervonta was just joking. This is out of the horse's mouth. This wasn't on no, I'm playing around or, no, I want... And he was crystal clear. And not only was he clear, he 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 qualified it by basically saying, "Not a little short, you know. He's not a big guy, you know. I got ability. I believe in my abilities. I think I'm more skilled than him, and I believe in my punching ability against anybody." I'm telling you, man. I really think this fight is going to happen. I think that PBC and you got to just. Follow the bouncing ball, as R.O.D. always like to say. Got to follow the bouncing ball. And he came out earlier this week and said, for sit, like he, he said he likes the way the PBC breaks down their percentages for pay-per-view. Right, I saw that. Remember, he said that early this week. So, remember, he's his own free agent. You know, he's, you know, he, 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 has, no, he has no tie-ins with nobody. So, I don't know how that would work, you know, with, Canelo having that that deal, you know, because I'm I'm sure it was the deal was in conjunction with him fighting other PBC fighters, but I gotta imagine that this is on the table. Oh, <laughs> then this then Bud would just sign a one year deal with them, you know, however to, just to get the fight done, and we're gonna guarantee you the type of. I, I just want people to understand something. There's a racial component here. Um. I'm funny. I'm looking at Ray Leonard and Duran right now as I'm speaking to you, my poster. <laughs> Part one, there's a racial component here when you have a, a black fighter going against a Hispanic fighter, especially a Mexican fighter. It just does good business. You know, it just does good business. You look, you just saw with, and I forgot about Ryan Garcia in Gervonta, which is nowhere. You, that ain't even in the same stratosphere as this fight. But look what that fight did. This fight, we joke. I, we, I was telling you, man. This, this is T. That would 
be teasing two million. Yeah, I think, I think so. Teasing two million. You told me on the phone come when I when I called you early. You said, "Bro, I, if that fight gets signed, I'm going to that fight." Yo, <laughs> yo, for real. I like, so I mean, yo, it, feel- it might be a grip, but. Bro, I wish I could show. I can't get to my. I want my text messages. You gotta remember, a lot of people I know don't really follow boxing, but yeah. they follow headlines. Yes. My man hit me like, "Yo, we gotta go to this," and I'm like, "I don't Bro, know what he's even like about. for real yet." And he think it's done. Like he like, "Yo, I because they because a lot of people missed out on Spence Crawford. They like, oh, we gotta go to this. If this get if this done, we gotta go. This this would be like." Like everybody got crazy with Crawford Spence, this would just be like so. Strategy. All right, so let's dream. A, let's dream a little bit, right? When would this take place? You got to do the single day Mayo, right? Either there or, or September twenty twenty four. Okay. Yeah. I'm thinking like okay a, a year from now. You need a year because you, you, you need, you need for, a year. Yeah, you need like you got You got to stretch it. You got to because Crawford might want to take a tune up against Which somebody he up should. here. He should. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Okay. Man. I just, yeah. So, I mean, look, we can still got a long way to go, but I do think this. If that happens, then Javante is going to fight anyway. And that's going to happen next. It's just, I, yeah. I feel it'll take like time. Some point that may I happen. think that, I think, I think it, it, it all depends. And Bob is funny because he was like, he never said no. He just said not right now. Not which right of now. Of course, it's not going right, to be not right now. But I just think that you're getting ready to see uh, an influx of. Remember, I, it was funny because I sent y'all a voice note earlier and I said, I just got this feeling that something yeah. strange is going to happen. Yeah. I, I got this feeling. I think it's that when you got this many fighters all kind of like underneath light heavyweight, all like kind of. Over top of each other. Yeah, man. Why not? No. Now, unfortunately, when stuff like this happens, guys get left out. You know, Benavidez. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Sometimes he, you just gotta wait. You just gotta wait. Yeah. Why have to wait? Yeah, he's he's gonna have his time, man. But it's it's yeah. and boxing is also kind of one of those things, man, where there's fights that you just maybe two years prior you don't see. But certain things just end up happening that lead. I mean, come on, man! Like, who really thought we would ever see Pacquiao and De La Hoya fight? Let alone right. Pacquiao going on to fight Cotto and these guys. It's just you just never know, man. I remember like, the bro. I remember the night that uh, Trinidad mentioned he wanted to fight Bernard. I remember it distinctively, like it was yesterday, and everybody was like, "Huh." And so the translator messed something up. You mean the, the middleweight Bernard Hop? You think you, that's what he wants to fight? And then you know Don King put that tournament together. Yeah. You know the rest of history. So we've seen crazier things happen. Now Trinidad was on the losing end of it, but people still talk about it because yeah. he did it and he tried it. You know what I mean? Yep. And he doesn't get anything so. for losing that fight either, man. Like it was nothing. And like if Bud was, let's just say before Canelo and lost, nobody would care. Like he'd be like, "Well, he shouldn't have went up that far." You know what I mean? That's you know. But imagine he wins, <laughs> <laughs> which I think is a very high possibility. I think, and it's not to 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 discredit Canelo. I just think Bud is such a far more superior skill fighter than Canelo. I think he, you know, I think he's way more superior. You know, so. It's where we are, man. So yeah, and we'll see. We'll till next time, you know. Yeah, I mean, maybe, it's gonna be, you know, well, like I said, this fight's coming up, man. But like, it's the, we're kind of like in this idle period. I mean, there's something in the states, you know, for a lot of you know, a lot of our UK fans, you know, there's this thing called <laughs> football that's starting pretty soon. That kind of takes presence presence over everything me, over here, but. Uh, but let me do my Bob Aver voice. We're not going to do a show then. With the, the, it's NFL opening it's weekend. The NFL. I forget. They was asking about some fight. You know, Bob got in his feelings like, we're not doing anything that weekend. It's NFL it's opening weekend. He's, he's going to sweat shot to his sweatsuit and everything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, All right, man. So, yo, follow us on the ground. Right, bro. At Guard Your Girl Boxing. You already know what it is. 
Facebook.com slash GYG Boxing. We're back, man. We're here. We're back. So, we're back. We will Please. see when, if in 2024. Bro, this is going to be crazy. <laughs> Bud ain't stopping, though. He, look, he depressed. He, de- he put the press. And when Bud got, see, one thing about Bud before we go, he's not a shock value guy, right? No, right. So when he got, right. That's why when I was like, okay, this is there's, becoming a real thing. There's legs to this. Right, right. There's legs to this now. Like he, and he's breaking it down how he's going to beat him. I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are out, man. Until next time. All right, thank you.